There we go. Hi. Morning. Hi, morning. 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 Here we are. Right. Guys, welcome. First of all, thank you very much for joining and welcome to the Start to Run program. We are going to have a whirlwind of a time. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to take you from hopefully zero running ability all the way up to whatever your running goals might be. And we're going to do that in a safe and effective way. That is our main aim for you over the course of this program. Originally, it was designed to be eight weeks, but we've pretty much change that plan now and it's going to work on a rolling month to month basis so if you finish eight weeks and you want to continue there will be up to week 12 and then up to week 16 and up to week 20 so that you don't necessarily have to stop at eight weeks and you can continue going on and on and on and on and on until you reach whatever goal it might be let's kick things off then with a bit about us who are we as inner fight Founded in 2008 by Marcus Smith, our focus is mainly health and performance. Ultimately, we want to make people better at life. And it's sort of emulated through our core values of hard work, honesty, simplicity, smash life, have fun, and mental toughness. I think real key core brand values there. As an endurance arm, we are simple but scientific, geeky but understandable. And so what we've aimed to do with this Start to Run program is take all the geeky running knowledge and all the technical stuff and really, really simplify it for you guys so you don't have to worry about it. You just have to get up, put the shoes on, get out the door, and you can still make all of those gains in a safe, fun, effective way. Don't want to talk about me yet. We'll keep talking about who we are. <laughs> As an endurance team then, we started off with Marcus, obviously the founder of Inner Fight. He started coaching endurance athletes. Can't remember the year. I want to say it started off in 2010. He started coaching endurance. And then Tom Walker came on board, who is now head of the endurance arm. And now we're a team of five endurance coaches. We've really, really grown over the last two years or so. I joined in 2000. When did I join? February 2019. Um, I have a background in math teaching, so I like all the geeky number sides of it. And I started, my background was in performance swimming. And I sort of blended into running as the years have progressed. And now that's my main focus. I just love taking people with a goal or an aspiration or a dream or a vision and helping them to get it. And I get goosebumps whenever people tell me their goals about running. It's so exciting. Um, running for me, it's, it's opened many, many doors. It's some of my best friends are now runners and i've met them through running i met marcus through fitness and we share this love of running and we've been all over the world and done many adventures just because we love running and exploring um it's given me opportunities firstly to work at Innerfight. it's helped me bond with my wife even more we run marathons together we run ultras together and now that we have our daughter hannah she comes in a running buggy and she comes running with us so it's just as a sport, the barrier to entry is so low, but the gains that you can make and the things that you can do are just so, so powerful. That's a bit about me. So the Start to Run program, how have we structured it for you guys? We've broken it up into three elements. The first is train your body. That's again, sort of broken down into three subsections. We've got running, which is obviously the main focus why we're here. I've programmed for you guys to start off with three run sessions a week. They're going to be progressive. So you'll notice on the program that I've sent you, there's run one, run two, and run three. I suggest you do them in order, one, two, three, but the days doesn't matter. So you'll be sent a program. I'll send it out to you on Saturday night, and it'll be in your inbox for Sunday morning. How you split up your week is completely up to you. You all have different commitments, different job pressures hectic things that I couldn't even begin to imagine. All we ask is that you complete those three runs, ideally with some rest in between, but between then and then the next week coming out. You will also have mobility. This is the thing, as coaches, we tend to find most people skip. 
and it this could be the difference between you being a successful runner and a non-successful runner it's the non-sexy stuff nobody puts it on instagram nobody really talks about it but we all do it <laughs> which is why we don't need to go to the physio every week it's so so important guys to keep everything below the waist healthy you're going to be getting probably more impact than you've ever had before as your running increases and so it just helps with all of that core work obviously when you're running you're not just using your legs your upper body is doing a lot of work as well and that's all controlled by this section in the middle not just the front and the six pack we're looking at all of your back everything to keep your body upright you need a strong core so what we will introduce from week two is core elements as well there will also be a fourth additional optional run that you can do so eventually what you'll have in this program is six things to complete in the week the idea behind this when i started running the amount of mistakes that i made was unbelievable and i still do i make mistakes in my training in my in my selection in my races but what we are aiming for you is that you don't have to make all the mistakes that we have made and so this program is designed to help you skip all of those out whether it's mistakes in training mistakes with kit uh, tracking and monitoring how you're running giving yourself feedback so how did you feel was your run good today or was it bad is it because you did sleep or didn't sleep what did you have last night did you have some drinks did you eat some heavy pasta? Who knows? So the tracking side of it, this is why you also have a tracking document. So after you do your runs, you can put a little reflection in. It might just be felt fantastic, or it might be, it was horrible today because it was too hot. Just keeping a little note of what you're doing and how you're feeling. When you look back on that later on, it's really, really powerful tool. And then questions. I have no doubt that you probably have hundreds of questions about running. And this is what we wanted this program to be about. If you have a question, send it to me. There is no stupid questions. Believe me, I've been asked ridiculous things that I never even thought people would have wanted to know. But I guarantee that if you have a question, somebody else has probably got the same question. So don't keep it inside, share it with me, and we'll put it out there so that you all get the answers. Train your mind, the second element of this. So you'll notice week one, we have goal setting if you don't have a goal how do you know what direction you're going in and how do you know what route to take i know that you all have goals whether you've shared them with people or whether you've kept them to yourself so more so much more powerful if you write the goals down i think that the stat is 64 percent you're 64 percent more likely to achieve your goal if you write it down and share it so this is why in week one, we've introduced the goal setting element of the program. Write down all your crazy goals. What do you want to achieve? How do you want to achieve them? They could be ridiculously aspirational, but you'll put in place small steps to get there. And every day you'll get that one step closer to achieving it. If you think the goal is too crazy, tell me and I'll give you more ways that you can get there and probably give you a time frame that we're looking at to get you there. Each week will have a different element to train your mind. So I've said it might be a podcast, it might be an article, it might be a documentary that you can watch based around running. It might be about running technique or running form. But the idea is to give you a, another tool in your toolkit that's just above and beyond what a normal beginner running program might have. Goal setting, I've talked about that, that's the first week. Challenge. So. This element, we don't just want you to run and just think, yes, I'm done. We want to upgrade every aspect of your life. So today's challenge or this week's challenge was to wake up and upon waking up, have a glass of water, kickstart your body into a positive state. Um, your body is mostly water. So if there you go, I see everyone's drinking their water right now. <laughs> Fantastic. Every week we're going to increase the challenge so we're going to put in a next challenge and so by the end of if you're on the program for four weeks you're going to have four new habits that are instilled in your life that will give you a positive outcome if you're on the program for eight weeks that's eight things if you're on the program for 12 weeks that's 12 things the longer you're on the program <laughs> the more new healthy habits that you're going to have and hopefully then that will impact well it's not going to impact negatively 
that will impact on your running in a positive way as well. So if you're going to go out the door for a run first thing in the morning, you've at least had 500 milliliters of water in your body. You're going to be less dehydrated than if you just got up and went out the door. Dictionary. So as new runners, there are so many of these terms, lactate threshold, heart rate zones, tempo, fartlek, heel toe drop, toe off, stance, all these words, you're probably just like, what on earth are they on about? I just want to go and run. We figured though, you might want to know what these words mean. You do you know what an aerobic training run is? Do you know what a tempo training run is? So each week we're going to add a dictionary element to the program just to introduce some running terms. If you have any specific terms that you really want to know that I've not yet thought of, fire them across to me in an email and I can put them in in the following week for you. That's not an issue. The meeting points then. So we plan to have two meet points every week, at least virtually. Um, there's going to be people in this group from all over the globe. It's going to be fantastic. Different time zones, different places. So that the 7 a.m. might change. At the minute, we're aiming to have the virtual meet points on a Sunday and on a Wednesday. The Sunday meet point will be a little bit more geeky. So we're going to share with you um, some tips, some resources, information. So I think the, the next Sunday session is going to be Nutrition 101. So how to fuel running in a healthy way. The Wednesday sessions are all about you guys. So this first session that we have on Wednesday is going to be about goal setting. So you need to have your goals ready for Sunday. Have a look at the document, work through the, the pack and come on Wednesday with your goals ready to go and we'll be discussing them you're going to be sharing them and we're going to give you ways that you can um, make steps to achieve those goals every wednesday is definitely all about you so you'll be sharing more on the wednesday sessions the sunday is the geeky one we'll have guest speakers we'll have um, people talking about different things and we'll get professionals in their field talking to you guys it's going to be awesome community so you can go online, you can search a beginner running program, you can download it, fantastic, stick it on your fridge. That gives you no accountability whatsoever. If you miss a day, no one says anything. If you miss a week, nobody says anything. So this group is all about community. We're going to hold each other accountable to get all of these sessions done. For example, you might have looked at that and gone, goal setting, I might do that later on. No, you need to do that for Wednesday because you're going to look like an idiot if somebody asks you what your goal is and how you're going to achieve it and you haven't worked through that. So we're holding each other accountable to get everything done. And it's so powerful. It's like having a little demon on your back, making sure that you're going to go and do all the things that you say you're going to do. So what I need from you is your contact details. I have all your email addresses. Fantastic. But I want your mobile numbers and I'm going to set up a huge WhatsApp group where we can share information more instantaneously. You can share pictures, you can motivate each other, and we'll be sort of a mini community um, through WhatsApp as well as on Zoom. If you don't wanna be part of that WhatsApp group, that's absolutely fine, I will not be offended. But if you do, just email me your mobile number. And the last thing I want to know, in the chat box in the Zoom here, can you just type where you are in the world? Dubai, UK, Qatar, Oman, wherever it is, type it into the chat box. I want to see where you are in the world. Fantastic. Dubai and Sharjah, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. So everyone is pretty much Dubai based. Excellent. I know we have, I'm sure we have one or two people from the UK. So this is even better. So when the lockdowns lift, what we hope to do is potentially have group runs. So we'll be able to get all you guys together and run together. Obviously, at the minute, 
the rules are a little bit strict and I'm stuck in the UK, <laughs> but I will be back soon. And then when we are back, yes, we will have group run sessions. So we can all get up, we can meet together, we can push each other, we can go for some breakfast, we can have chats. And again, just really cement that community vibe, which is really what we wanted from this program. 16 minutes, that's, <laughs> that's all I had to say. If you have any questions, um, I'm here to answer them. Let's go. And if not, we can kickstart this program off, go get your runs done, start filling out your feedback sheets. And yeah, I will see you on Wednesday. Welcome to the Start to Run program, guys. Exciting times. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Rob. It's going to be, it's going to be very good. Thanks so much. Yes, Rob. If, if you've got any questions, feel free to just ask them now. 20 past four I am, and I've had two coffees, so I can't go back to bed. <laughs> Rob, a quick one. How do I... Um, from uh, the RP... For, sorry, yes. Um, hold on. Let me just mute everyone else here, and then you can unmute yourself. It's too much background noise. Okay, can you ask that again? RPE, you said. Yeah, how do you... So obviously on the first three runs, there's a different RPE scale to try and hit. Yeah. How do you, how do you estimate what that is? Because obviously I've never done it before. I sort of have an idea of pacings. I know what my maximum pace might be, but how does that relate? How can I figure that out? So have you, did you have a look at the dictionary section? Yes. So on the dictionary section, I put an RPE scale that gives you rough idea of intensity and what it should feel like. So as a rough, as a rough idea, what I tend to say, if, if a run's meant to be easy, an aerobic run, that's sort of your all day pace, something you can hold and maintain for a very, very, very long time. It should be conversational. And one of the main mistakes that people make when they go for an easy or an aerobic run is they make it too fast, they make it too hard. So you're not making it aerobic and you're not getting that aerobic benefit. So a really good scale, if you want to go for an easy run, you should, when you're running, Take one breath and try and say the alphabet out loud in that one breath. If you can't get to Z in that one breath, it's probably too hard. So on this RPE scale, you're looking at, I think it's seven and an eight in week one, isn't it? Let's pull it up here. So yeah. Yeah, seven, to yes. Yes. seven to eight. So that is a hard effort. An aerobic run is usually about a four, four and a half, let's say. So if you're going up to seven or eight, it's you're pushing through that barrier, you should be out of breath. And in that walking time, this is when you're recovering. So what we're doing, these, these first, or this first week is sort of interval sessions. So you're going high, low, high, low, high, low. Um, seven out of 10 effort, you should be looking, let me just pull this up here. Yeah, seven out of 10, vigorous activity, uh, it's borderline uncomfortable. So obviously you can maintain that pace for that full effort, but potentially if the effort was slightly longer, you might not be able to maintain that effort. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, it's everybody's perceived RPE is completely different and it, you know, it depends on a lot of things. If you're, if you're, you say mentally tough and mentally sensitive, if you're mentally tough, you might have a higher RPE or a higher pain threshold than someone that's mentally sensitive and they might perceive their effort to be more than it is. So it'll take a bit of fine tuning and it'll take a few weeks to figure out what that is. And obviously it's on a sliding scale. So as you get fitter, your RPE is going to drop for that same pace. So a four will feel different in a month's time to a four feeling nine. Okay. Awesome. Thanks Rob. Welcome. Can I ask with that, mm -hmm. if, if you have your RP7 for one minute, would be then different from your RP7 for two minutes? Yes. Okay. So the, if we're looking at how fast you're moving, for, for the RP7 for one minute, it's probably going to be slightly faster than the RP7 for two minutes. As we progress through the program, We'll start to look at things like what pace are you running at? How fast does that feel? How do you then readjust your pace as you get fitter? And we can talk about the tests that we use 
to to program those for our our one-to-one -one athletes and then so you could potentially do those tests yourself as well and figure out what your pacing zones might be but again it's like everything so your pacing zones in dubai right now will not be the same as your pacing zone in dubai in december so they're always they're always moving up and down um, along with your heart rate as well so you know you go outside now and you're not going to be able to maintain the same pace or the same heart rate that you would be able to on a treadmill in an air-conditioned gym or in the UK in winter. It, everything changes all the time. So this is one of the things you've got to understand is you've got to be flexible and you've got to understand that conditions will change and that will affect how your running is. You can't go out and hit the same pace every day, day on day on day on day. Hey Rob, hey. morning. Um, can we share our recordings from our, our watch with you? Just, yes. Um, yeah. So um, the reason I put I put together the the tracking sheet really is for some people don't have Garmin's or, or sports watches or, or GPS watches, um, and are just going based on time, and that's that's fantastic. That's absolutely fine. We we completely that's. What people want to do, no issue. But we want to know how you're feeling. Um, if you use Strava, if you use Training Peaks, if you use Garmin Connect, um, that'll keep a log of everything. So you can keep that log. What I'd say is just add in the feeling element. So you can do this in Strava. You can, um, when your run uploads, you can add a comment. You can make your account private so only you can see those comments. It's almost like a training diary or a journal, if you like. So you're starting to, to figure out patterns of how you're feeling post-run. Um, and it's, it's really, really interesting. So I can look back at similar runs that I've done at a similar time last year and see how I was feeling and make comparisons. So I was feeling great this day. Why was I feeling so great versus I was feeling rubbish today. What have I done that's different? Um, and it's, it's almost like, you know, when you, when you do something in work, you, you review your performance. It's the same with sport. So it's just trying to encourage people to do that a little bit more, reflect a little bit on how they're running. Thank you. Um, I have one more question. You know, you've given us our three different runs in the mobility and the core training. Yeah. What is your um, mm -hmm. ideal recommendation on how that's split during the week, if you don't mind me asking? Yep. Yeah. So the, the mobility, there's no core in this week, but the mobility, that's very low impact. So you could do that mobility every day if you really wanted to. Um, the runs, if I, what I recommend in week one is I'd take, uh, do a run day and then have a recovery day from the running. So you're alternating the day. So that might look like Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> I forgot what day there was in there. <laughs> and then in between, you can put the, the mobility in. So maybe you go, okay, my mobility day is going to be Saturday. So I've done my week of running and then I've got Saturday as my mobility day. Obviously, as the runs increase, there's going to be maybe four runs that you're doing. So you're going to have to do maybe a back-to-back -back day. So you're running two days in a row. That's absolutely yeah. fine as well. What you might do then, you might do a run, run, mobility, run, core, run. You know? But again, it depends on your schedule. When do you have the time? Um, all it says is that you do the runs in order. So you're running run one, run two, run three, run four. Don't go four, two, one, three. Um, yeah. Plan it like that. Cool. So, so the idea is to try and get a little bit of recovery in between each of the runs. Exactly. Especially exactly. the more intense they get. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, you could do this again. Another mistake that people make is they go too hard too soon. And if you haven't been running for a while, fantastic. You might be able to go out and run every day for a week, but at the end of that week, the damage that you've done hasn't allowed your body to recover. Um, it's like, you know, when people go into the gym for the first time, they start doing bench press and they get the DOMS the next day, they're all sore, they're stiff, they can't move and they can't do anything for four days afterwards. It's the same with running. Your body takes time to adjust. And so we're just breaking you in nice and slowly, get that recovery time, and then we'll progressively add the load in. So we were doing it in a safe way. I mean, Lots of you could probably go out, run 5, 10, 15K right now if you wanted to. It doesn't mean, though, that you'd be able to get up and do it again the next day. And we're looking for the longevity, really. 
Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I have a question around the daily challenge bit on the logs. Yes. So it says run one, run two, run three, mobility, daily challenge. What, what did we put over there? That was just so you could tick it off. So there's seven boxes. Uh -huh. um, yeah. You can tick it if you want. You can put it on Instagram and tag me. <laughs> um, yeah, just okay. even you don't have to use that. It was just an idea. I thought, how, how do people want to track this? So I put a little checkbox so you can go, yes, I've drank my water today. And then week two, okay. I've drank my water and I've done something. Run. Exactly. And okay. then by the end of eight weeks, you'll have eight things that you're doing every day that you could check off, but you should feel fantastic. All right. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. No more questions? Rob, just something more regarding the mobility challenge, uh, just a small clarification. Yes. So it can be, uh, so run can be complemented with the mobility challenge on a daily basis also. Yeah, definitely. And even if you, so you can pick and choose from the mobility. So let's say you don't have to do the full mobility session. You might go for a run and you finish the run and your quads are tight. So you might go, okay, uh -huh. right. My, if, if it's just my quads that are tight, I'm going to do the couch stretch. Really good for quads. Or you might, you know, you might come back and your hamstrings might be tight. So you might just do a hamstring stretch. Um, what I'd say, don't do the mobility necessarily before the run. Stretching before the run doesn't really do anything. And I can send you some scientific research that shows that actually decreases your run performance. Um, what we can do again later on in the program, we're going to look at dynamic warm up. So how should you warm up specifically for running? If you've ever been to the start of a race and you see people sort of just bending over, touching their toes, um, waving their arms around in the sky and like swinging legs and stuff, lots of it's completely useless and it's more of a mental thing. So we'll actually, we'll teach you the correct way to warm up, um, the scientific way and the proven way to, uh, to, I nearly said wake up, to warm up. And we'll, yes, like I say, we'll do that later on in the program. But mobility wise, if you don't have the time to do the full mobility session every day, but you do feel tight, pick something post run um, to target that area. And it won't be an issue. Rob, can I ask um, before going for a run, say in the morning, mm -hmm. um, so I work, I get up at like five in the morning and then I want to go for a run. Yeah. It's better to drink, hydration before or after so if you have if i drink half a liter of water i'm probably going to get a stitch while i'm running because i'm running 20 minutes or 15 or mm -hmm. half an hour after that so how do we avoid getting a stitch one and then still getting the hydration in so how long are you from getting up to getting out and running probably about 20 minutes to half an hour depends yeah, I would, I'd get up and I'd sit. You don't have to down the 500 milliliters, but as soon as you wake up, have it by your bed and start sipping it and just sip it as you're getting ready. Um, your body will start processing that really, really quickly if you're on an empty stomach and it's the first thing it's taking in. Okay. What I'd say, because Dubai is so hot at the minute, you're, yeah. you're going to need that. Another thing, if you're, if you're interested, you can look at how much you're sweating. So if you've got weighing scales, you could stand on the weighing scales before you go. Assuming you're not taking in any fluids when you're running, weigh yourself afterwards and calculate the difference. And that'll be your sweat okay. rate. So how much you're sweating in that run. What you should really do, or ideally do, is rehydrate with 1.5 times what you've lost. So if you've lost a kilo, you need a liter of water. Um, times 1.5 so you're looking at 1.5 liters to replenish what you've lost okay and just is it just is it better to have just water or like the hydration uh and hydration sachet so again depending on how long you're running for and what your nutrition is like around the running um would depend on what you need in terms of replacing electrolytes and salts and things if you have quite a salty diet you're adding salt to your meal then that should be plenty um 
extra electrolytes aren't necessarily going to hurt you. Um, they're not going to damage you in any way. So if you want to put an electrolyte in a drink post run, it's not an issue. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. I've got one here from Deborah. I've had knee surgery last year and did not recover well. So can I do a walk run for the walk part? Yes. Deborah, send me a message and let me know what knee surgery you had. And I can send you um, maybe some strength stuff to help with that rehab for the knee. Great. Right, yeah. Thank you so much. Welcome. Lovely. That's so, just the last one. Yes. <laughs> and with regards to any small injuries or any niggly bits, um, we can share that with you and you can. Yeah. Advise. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. If you've got anything that's hurting, any previous surgeries, any illnesses that I need to know about, um, just fire them off in an email or once you, I'll give you my phone number and you can send me a WhatsApp and let me know. And if it's a case of we have to give you two or three exercises for rehab, that you can do two or three times a week, we can certainly do that. That's not an issue. We want you all healthy and happy and able to get out and run. That's the goal of this. Oh, you're muted there. Are you just saying thank you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I was just saying thank you. Cool. Really appreciate okay. it. <laughs> no worries. Fantastic. Right. That seems to be all the questions. Perfect, 33 minutes, done. Three minutes over schedule, not a problem. Have a lovely day, guys. Go and enjoy your day of work, maybe, or furlough, or relaxing, or whatever you've got planned. And we'll see you all on Wednesday. Cool, have a good week. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.